why should you include references in your work at university? You might think that references are a bit of a pain, a fiddly addition that you might leave to the end of your writing process, and you have to panic to do at the last minute because you forgot how long they take to do properly. But referencing can be a superpower, and we're going to tell you why in this video. Superpower number one, convincing your marker that you do know what you're talking about. Your work will be read by many different people over the course of your degree, so while you might be marked by someone who knows you personally, there's a chance that you'll also be marked by someone who doesn't know you, your style, or even how much you actually know. So use your references to show off what you can do. Well-structured references means that you can highlight all the background reading that you've done around your topic. Depending on what you're working on, this can be recommended reading as part of your course, or things that you've gone away and researched independently. Either way, good references allow you to demonstrate this hard work, as well as giving a structure to your work so your marker can follow the presentation of your arguments and analysis in the way that you want. It might also point them towards something they didn't realise existed, like a really new paper they haven't read yet. While you might not always be expected to reference early in your degree, it is a really good habit to get into, as you will need to do it more routinely the further into your degree you go. So save yourself some time and get really good at it early when the stakes are a bit lower. Superpower number two, shielding yourself against plagiarism. What is plagiarism? According to the University of Cambridge, plagiarism is defined as submitting as one's own work, irrespective of intent to deceive, that which derives in part or in its entirety from the work of others without due acknowledgement. It is both poor scholarship and a breach of academic integrity. Okay, so that's a pretty heavy quote, but what does it actually mean? Well, here's some examples of how easy it is to get caught out. Quoting verbatim without acknowledgement. You write an essay in a bit of a rush, your supervisor reads it, and recognises their own words being repeated back to them without any credit. That would be bad and also just a bit embarrassing. Paraphrasing without acknowledgement. Summarising and maybe rewriting a little bit does not magically make someone else's work yours. Throw in a reference there and you're sorted. Using ideas from someone else without acknowledgement. Whether intended or otherwise, nicking someone else's ideas is just wrong. Plagiarism comes from the Latin for kidnapper. Do you want to be a kidnapper of ideas? Of course not! This includes a cheeky copy and paste from the internet, but you would never make such a rookie mistake, would you? Good. You may have spotted a pattern with these examples. You can use other people's work and ideas, but you must acknowledge. Otherwise, you're just passing them off as your own, which is just silly. And then there's submitting someone else's work as your own and collusion. Now, these are super important and have some overlap. You might wonder why on earth you would submit someone else's work instead of your own, but it does happen. People can get desperate and pay other people to write assignments for them. Not only is this expensive and risky, as you'll never be sure to know what quality you'll get back, there have been cases of students being blackmailed by people they paid. So just don't get sucked in and do the hard work yourself. Collusion is a tricky one and has caught people out a fair few times now, which is why we want to highlight it. Sometimes you'll get asked to do a piece of work as a team effort. You work with a group on something, write it up together and submit it together. Sounds simple, right? What about when you work with others on a piece of work that is an individual effort, though? People often study closely together at university, whether physically in the same place or online. You discuss ideas, readings and other thoughts as you try to work out what on earth you need to do. This is all fine and a good thing to do, but you do risk unintentionally influencing each other. What this can mean is that you write up your work, submit it, and your marker reads several essays that all sound eerily similar. You might not even have noticed you were doing it. To avoid this subliminal influence, study together by all means, but make sure you write up separately to avoid any unintended plagiarism. If you do ever receive substantial help from someone else, be sure to mention it as a credit so you can be open and honest about it. So in short, just remember to say where you got stuff from. Simple. You'll get lots of guidance on how to do this from many people over the course of your degree, so don't worry too much and ask if you're ever not sure. Superpower number three. Use the latest tech to smash your workload. Did you know that there are tools that can help take the headache out of referencing? Reference managers are pieces of software that do lots of things. If you install one with a browser plugin, 
You can save articles that you're reading online to your library with the click of a button. If you're looking at a journal that the university subscribes to, some reference managers will also save a PDF version of the article into your library so you can come back to it later. Reference managers help you manage your reading too. With helpful filing options and tags, you can divide your reading up according to what piece of work you're reading for, or maybe even whether you've read something or not. There are lots of options. The joy of a reference manager is that if the underlying metadata is good, and in our databases it often is, you'll pull through all the information you need with a click of a button into your library. Titles, authors, page numbers, everything. If something comes through without all that information, it takes two seconds to add it in and save it. You can use reference managers purely to manage your reading so you don't have lots of PDFs saved in different places, but they are also helpful for when you're writing, as you can use them to insert citations into your work and then generate a formatted bibliography or list of references at the end of your document, all in the right citation style. So that's why referencing is important. We hope we've convinced you of its value towards helping you become a well-rounded member of the academic community. And don't forget, if you get completely stuck and need to talk to someone, just ask your librarian. It's what we do.